Today we're talking chocolate and specifically chocolate extract. Now chocolate's such a versatile ingredient, you can use it in drinks, cooking, basically anything in the culinary world, chocolate can find its way into. The problem with drinks is that it often makes a murky drink because people will make a chocolate syrup and I will be doing a video on that shortly, but chocolate syrups tend to be cloudy and opaque. So they don't really work well if you're using whiskey and you wanna make like a Manhattan or an old fashioned styled cocktail. And they don't necessarily work well with soda because they are thick, specifically chocolate syrups can be quite thick. So this is where you want to use chocolate extract. Now there's a simple chocolate extract, which we're doing today with the percolate Later. If you don't know what this device is, go check out the video on how to make an extract. It explains it all. And as soon as you figure out that this is uh, how it works, you'll pretty much always do this because it saves a lot of time and steps. There's a more complex extract that you'd use to make creme de cacao, and that would use distillation. And it's a multi step, it does use extract this method. But after you get your extract, you take the cocoa beans or the, the cocoa nibs that are left over, mix it with more alcohol, put it in here, distill that, and then combine the two. I will be doing that in another video in the near future. But for now, let's just keep it basic because this is a wonderful ingredient to work with. It, it works fantastic in bitters. So Angostura has a new chocolate bitters out. Probably they're using this type of extract probably buying it but uh, this is the way you would make it now it also works well in cocktails and even just as an addition to whiskey and one thing about whiskey or any brown spirit like rum and cognac anything that's been aged in charred wood when you have a seasoned glass aka you've drank all the whiskey out of it and the glass is just sitting there if you let it sit for 20 minutes smell the glass it smells wonderful and there is a distinct chocolate note in it so if you want to amplify that because they naturally have that note but it's often buried in other aroma compounds this is the way to do it as you can see i've just set it up with cocoa nibs this has been soaking for 48 hours or macerating i stirred it up a little bit just to take some out to show you how clear it is and then we're just going to open the stopcock in the proportions in this normally when you make an extract it's one part of your solvent to one part of your solids or your material for cocoa extract or cacao extract and both words are fair to use it's just different language different lingo from a different time so they both mean the same thing the idea is that you're going to use two parts solvent to one part cocoa nibs it's just slightly different than the extract video because you're gonna get more flavor out of this. So uh, do not use cocoa powder. It will just turn into a messy slurry. Uh, when I show you how to make a chocolate syrup in the next video, there's a way to work with cocoa powders. Simply adding a little bit of this to whiskey or rum is just a good way to enhance the flavor. Again, you can make bitters out of it. You can take gentian tincture and add it to it. But again, the percolator method, one of the benefits is it filters. And also, cocoa butter, found in cocoa nibs, it's about 20%, will float to the top. So I know Granny Hester makes a great chocolate extract by putting cocoa nibs in a mason jar and filling it with her handle of Canadian whiskey. However, that keeps the cocoa butter in there. And though cocoa butter is a stable oil, it will go rancid when exposed to light, air, moist environments. So it does shorten the life. Now, the one neat thing about having a vertical separation a cylinder like this is that all the cocoa butter stays on top and you can actually see it coating. There was a little thin layer of it on top that you can actually see the cocoa butter floating. And then as it goes through and filters out, it gets caught up on the cocoa nibs. So you don't actually get any of it. But there is always going to be some cocoa butter getting into your extract, and that's what glycerin's for. We're gonna add roughly, this is a 240 mil bottle. You know, we'll probably get 220, 230 mils of the extract. We're gonna add 10 to 20 mils of glycerin, and that will actually help keep any of the cocoa butter or other oils in solution. That's what they used to do at the old soda fountains when they made an extract. Uh, it does help keep 
things stable. Now, I left the cocoa nibs fairly coarse here. Uh, you can grind them a little bit finer, but you'd only wanna do about a coarse coffee grind. So think of the coarsest coffee you can find, not whole bean, but coarsest coffee that you put through a percolator. That's what you wanna use. This is pretty close, but it's still a little chunky. 48 hours in here, strain it out. You can see that this is pretty much perfectly clear. If I have a piece of white paper, you can see that it is bright and shiny and it does have an oily consistency to it. But yeah, that is the benefit of this because it is filtering through a cotton ball, some fine sand and the rest of the material. So you're gonna get this bright workable solution that if you're mixing with a something like a, an old fashioned or a Manhattan where you don't want it to be cloudy, murky, ugly looking, this is the way to go. The flavor of it is chocolatey. It's almost like the aroma of dark chocolate, not the flavor of dark chocolate. Again, if you add a small amount of sugar and you know, you can actually make a chocolate phosphate with this uh, by adding some acid and sugar, but this on its own kind of tastes like eating raw cocoa nibs. It, it, it's not stellar. It's the addition of sugar, acid, whiskey to it that's actually gonna make it taste better. Using it in a soda, you'd use it more as a highlight as opposed to a chocolate syrup. So for example, the chocolate phosphate, super popular drink at the soda fountain. We don't see them anymore, mostly because the drink is murky. This is not a good substitute for that, but it is a good way to add more chocolate flavor to a chocolate syrup. So consider this kind of a base working ingredient. And the other really cool thing about this is that in the world of non-alcoholic drinks, the one thing that a lot of drinks are missing is the alcohol bite. Now one, if you've ever worked around chocolate or you love chocolate, you'll find that hot peppers and chocolate go really well together. That's historically significant. It goes back a long way. But you can get whatever peppers you like to work with and you can actually just grind them up in whatever small amount. I'd recommend only a few grams to start. And you can just add it to the percolator with the cocoa nibs and you're going to get that spiciness and that little bit of heat in a non-alcoholic drink is going to kind of replace that burn in a non-alcoholic drink. And that's what you find in a lot of patents for non-alcoholic drinks that try to replicate the flavor of alcohol is trying to put something in there that burns. Peppers do an excellent job of that. But the other thing you'll find historically is that it was rarely ever just cocoa or cocoa nibs or cacao. They'd often put coumarin in it and vanilla. So if you have vanilla beans, just chop up a quarter of one and put it in there. Again, you don't want to overpower the chocolate flavor, but a complimentary flavor, flavor does help. You use cinnamon. Again, this is cinnamon oil or cassia oil in this case. Use an essence, you don't know what an essence is, go check out the video, done a video on that one. It's more dilute and easier to work with, you're not gonna overpower, so like a few drops of that in there will make a difference. Coumarin was common, don't use coumarin, can't use it anymore. But they used to even put catnip in this and eventually that's one I want to try for some reason, that will come down the road. But now you have your perfectly clear chocolate extract. And again, you don't need to be super accurate about this. You just need to get some glycerin in there to uh, stabilize any of the oils. And it will clear up. Actually, it's cleared up pretty quickly. Again, if we put a cloth behind it, perfectly clear and it is wonderful to work with. It does take a little practice to work with because it does have just kind of that raw cocoa nib flavor. The aroma comes out when you mix it with something in a very small amount. You only need like a few drops of this. So use it like bitters if you're adding it directly to a drink. But I do recommend kind of adjusting the flavor a little bit, either with peppers, vanilla, cinnamon, you need to round out the flavor. You can put gentian extract in it to get a basic bitters. And then from there, sugar, acid, salt. Again, getting those four primary flavors all together or is going to help this because on its own, it's pretty plain. 
though once you add complementary flavors or mix it with something, it starts to stand out. That's how to make a basic chocolate extract. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to make a chocolate syrup because one thing they don't tell you in all the other YouTube videos when they're making a chocolate syrup is that it always looks nice and liquidy, but if you give it 24 hours, it pretty much goes solid. And this is a chocolate syrup and you could turn it on its side and that's what happens. So I'm gonna explain how to fix that or how to use that properly. And there are many patents filed on it. So I will see you in the next video and we'll talk chocolate syrups.